the next presentation, post number 88, the development of the TACMAN multiple quantitative PCR assay for the molecular diagnosis of B uh, William uh, Buren syndrome. The authors are Ranavira DM, Dizilva D, uh, Panchanathan N, uh, Kajan N, Samarasinga D, Pereira S, Morvak Korala R, Gun uh, Gunavardhan S, Chandrasekharan NV. The presenting author, Ranavira DM. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Dinali and I'm here to present my research work which is the development of a TACMAN multiplex quantitative PCR assay for the molecular diagnosis of Williams syndrome. Actually this assay was set up to provide the public a low cost um, low cost, uh, affordable and reliable test when compared to other tests available in Sri Lanka. The patients were selected uh, based on two, uh, actually, uh, two main clinical features, which is the developmental delay, congenital cardiac defects, and uh, facial dysmorphism. This uh, Williams syndrome is caused by a micro deletion in chromosome 7 in the Q arm of 11.23 region. This deletion is about 1.5 to 1 1.8 uh, in size, and it, within this region, there are some, some critical genes and uh, uh, in this region. Uh, so in, uh, this is a conti contiguous gene deletion which includes the elastin gene. And in invariably in all cases of William Buren syndrome, this region is deleted. Coming to the methodology, first the DNA is extracted and quantified and then the TACMAN assay is set up. Uh, uh, sequence specific fluorescent labeled oligonucleotide probe, which is the TACMAN probe, plus uh, its primers go into this PCR. This uh, TACMAN probe has on, on its five prime end a reported uh, reporter and at the uh, three prime end a quencher. Due to the reporter and quencher's close proximity, there is no fluorescence emitted. Uh, so during the PCR, in the annealing and extension uh, step, the, uh, the pr TACMAN probe comes and binds to the target and the primers anneal and starts to extend. And then the uh, five prime exonuclease activity of the TAC comes and cleaves the reporter, thus separating the reporter and quencher. And then once this it's uh, separated, there is a fluorescent signal emitted and then uh, uh, the fluorescence signal is directly proportional to the uh, amplified product. And uh, there is also a, a positive control, negative control, and no template control in, the, uh, in each assay. So there is only one copy is deleted in, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in each patient. So in a normal person, if there is two elastin uh, um, genes, the target region and in the control region there is two TES gene but in a WBS patient there is only one copy of the elastin and two copies of the TES. Coming to the results, um, the 19 patients were found to be positive and five were found to be negative. Ten patient cases were confirmed by fluorescent institute hybridization. All 24 samples were sent for ex whole exome sequencing to find out the causes of the negative cases. And uh, conclusion, the, this test is a reliable and cost-effective test and it was clearly able to distinguish deleted cases from non-deleted cases and is also very less ex expensive. Thank you. Thank you. The paper is open for discussion. So, uh, thank you. Uh, what you have shown is related to a rare disease. So uh, what is unique in what you are present in most of the process. Now, if I explain the TACMAN process, so, I mean, as far as I could understand, it's a general process that you have described. Was there anything unique in the process that you uh, described, or what was your main intention to show the imports of following this process? Uh, it's or it's or very much, with, uh, when you compare with the currently available tests in Sri Lanka, this is very much low cost. And this is what we need for a set, uh, a type of assay to be set up in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. the, the, the process that you have described is the general attack process, isn't it? Yes, yes. 
there's nothing different from what is generally followed? Uh, no. Yeah. What's the incidence of the Williams syndrome that you have been uh, studying? There is uh, one in 7,500 live births. Uh -huh. That's when you go through the literature that you find. One in 7,000 live births. So yeah. that would be a very, very rare kind of incident. Yes, but there yeah. are about, uh, so far, about 70 patients that I have got. In, in the Sri Lankan yes, setup? Yes, in the Sri Lankan. How they are initially suspected, the first clinical suspect, and then they have a characteristic facial features. They have a characteristic face, and uh, mainly there is a supravalvular aortic stenosis, a cardiac defect, and those are the main features. Uh, yes. This, uh, <coughs> sorry, the the total number of patients in your study was twenty four. Twenty four. So all these twenty four were uh, clinically diagnosed and confirmed. Yes, clinical diagnosis. But in, in your case, the positive, uh, according to your procedure, only 19 were positive and uh, 5 were negative. Yes. So then what is the sensitivity? Sensitivity, uh, we confirmed by fluorescent, which is the gold standard method, 10 patients. Uh, so it, it was 100%. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause to the presenter. Thank you.